Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and today I'm going to be talking all timeline all the time. We're going to be digging deep into Cinema 4D's timeline. I'm going to be sharing some hopefully helpful tips and trick techniques and keyboard shortcuts that will really streamline your workflow when you're working with the timeline. So let's go and start off first by going over these view options here. So I'm going to go down to show and you'll see that show animated is already selected and you'll normally want to work like this because you're only showing the only things that are showing up in your timeline are the things with the objects with keyframes on them and that just really helps you just focus on those aspects. So if you're a hoarder type personality and you want a lot more you want to see everything you can uncheck this and you have everything showing up. You even have materials. Uh, but I don't know why you would want to work like that. It's just too much. Uh, I, so I usually just go and just have show animated selected. Uh, and there's all these other features in here as well, but the show animated is one important one that should stay on all the time. Uh, and we have this hide menu here that if you have something selected and you want to hide it, you can always go up here and just go hide selected elements. And I just hid that, uh, although that timeline, those tracks from the timeline. Now, if you want to unhide everything, unhide all, my logo capsule tracks all come back in. So if you want to hide a bunch of stuff and just focus on one thing, you can use that the hide features uh, but the one feature that I think is very helpful is this link feature here so we have three options in here all very useful so we can link the view with just our preview range so we're only seeing what is in our preview range here so if I move the preview range down it is automatically updating and just focusing on everything from frame 0 to frame 30 so that's pretty helpful if you just want to focus on a preview range so kind of like if you're in After Effects and you just want to focus on and zoom in on uh, just a certain part of your timeline here so that's pretty helpful so I'm going to turn that off and let's go back to our link menu here and we can turn on this link timeline object man manager selection so what's that let's turn that on so what we're going to do is Everything we select in the timeline is going to be select, or everything we select in the object manager, sorry, is going to be selected in the timeline. So this is kind of this is kind of handy when you just want to say I want to just select the camera, and then my camera is selected here, and I can easily just go and do whatever I want to do, edit these keyframes. But that could kind of be helpful having this link timeline object manager selection turned on. We can then link the view to the object manager, so I'm only seeing what is selected. So I can go to my logo capsule, and I'm only seeing the keyframes that are on <clears throat> this element that I selected, and all of its children as well. So that's very helpful when just focusing on a single object, or I can select multiple objects, and all those objects that are keyframed will show up in the timeline as well. So that'll help you really manage uh, what you're working with in your timeline and just focus on the tracks that you are selecting based on the objects in the object manager. So link is very helpful, uh, but I will turn all these off and just get everything that's animated back in my timeline view. So the next thing I'm going to go over is the folding menu here. So right now I have this uh, just some things unfolded here. Uh, but in our folding menu, we can fold all. So that's gonna un that's gonna fold everything up. We're only gonna have the base parent objects showing up in our timeline. If we want to select all of these and go unfold all, that'll unfold every single uh, track in here. So all the position tracks, all the rotation tracks, everything that you have keyframes on them, those tracks are gonna show up if you have the unfold all selected. We can just fold. Uh, just selected objects so I can just fold that camera so let's fold that actually I had everything selected so let's unfold the camera and if I want to just fold that that camera tracks I can just do fold selected that will fold everything back up or I can unfold selected uh, so that'll help you just focus on whatever objects you want to see everything from so the folding options very helpful. Now what if you want to just zero in on 
rotation tracks. So like in After Effects where you can hit uh, select objects and hit R, there's nothing like that really in Cinema 4D. There's only really global options. And you can access those by going to this little eyeball. It's closed, but if you poke the eye, the eye opens. So we have all of these options here. And we're gonna go and select these tracks. Uh, so we can we can choose to just see the uh, the offset tracks or any tracks that are in our uh, in our timeline right now. So we only have offset, position, and rotation. So if I turn this on and off, we we can let's first unfold everything here. So we're gonna go fold, folding, and unfold all. So we actually see. So by poking the eyeball and turning the eyeball off, none of our rotation keyframes are showing up just the position and offset. So we can actually hold command and poke the eye and that will just focus on the rotation. I can poke the position eye by holding command down as well. Uh, so command poke eye, command clicking and we'll just get the position keyframe. So that's one way that we can just deal with position, rotation or just position and just work with those position tracks. So uh, that's one helpful way is to use the uh, the eyeball to isolate those different uh, animation tracks. Uh, unfortunately, there's there's no uh, there's no like keyboard shortcut to uh, like there is in After Effects with the R and all that stuff. But the eyeball the eyeball uh, menu works pretty well uh, in my opinion. So the next thing we're gonna go over is just some uh, keyboard shortcuts that will help you in your timeline. So let's say we want to uh, frame and just zoom in on, uh, let's see, say I wanna just zoom in on these selected keyframes. I'm just gonna hit S on the keyboard and that will frame up that keyframe selection. So all those keyframes that I selected, if I hit S, my timeline is now filled with those keyframes pretty handy. So the next keyboard shortcut I'm going to go over is uh, hitting the O key. O key. So I'm going to just bring uh, my playhead to, uh, let's bring it down here. Now if I hit O, I'm going to, it's going to frame up the playhead in the center of your timeline. So that could be helpful if you want to, or I want to move my playhead here, hit O, and that's going to be centered up for me. Now what if I want to zoom or if I want to frame up all of my keys here? So you can either do the uh, the whole link with the preview range and that'll do that or if I undo that or if I'm just working around moving around uh, and I hit H that'll frame up all of my keys as well. And just so you know uh, just as you can move around by hitting one, two, and the three keys in the viewport here, I can hit one, two, one will slide the timeline back and forth, and two will kind of stretch out and zoom in here. Uh, so that will help you kind of really zoom in on just these keyframes uh, by hitting the one and the two keys. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna go over is gonna involve the F-curve menu, and you can access the F-curve menu by either hitting spacebar or by just clicking this F-curve mode here. So what I wanna do is go back to my normal key mode and say I want to just access and edit uh, these keyframes in the F-curve menu. So what I'm gonna do is, normally if I just switch over and hit spacebar, nothing is framed here. Uh, but if you want to maintain that selection in a, to focus on and still have selected in F-curve -curve, F -curve mode and have it um, nice and centered is by holding control and clicking the F-curve mode. And you can see that we have framed up our keyframe selection from the original key mode. And we can go in here and adjust our curve. So F-curve mode is very helpful when you really want to focus on uh, either one or multiple tracks here. Uh, so in the normal mode, you can't, um, let's just choose a bunch of tracks here. Let's, 
bring this up here a little bit. And so we got a bunch of tracks here. Uh, normally, if you want to adjust multiple curves, you cannot do it in key mode. But if I go and select all of my uh, position keyframes here, let's actually go back, select all of these, and we're going to hit control and click and hit S and that'll frame up everything. So those keyboard shortcuts still work, the SOH still work in F curve mode. And now I can select multiple curves and move them in the timeline. So that is just exclusive in the F curve, F curve mode. Uh, so if you've ever come into trouble where you, you know, you're grabbing all these and you want to edit all these at once, move all these Bezier curves, or Bezier handles at once, you can only do it in the F curve mode. Uh, so let's, uh, I'm gonna hold command and I'm gonna click and that'll add a new keyframe, uh, which is handy. So right now these tangents are broken so you can move them independently. But if you want to change this back to an auto tangent or what is usually on by default, we can just right click it and go to auto tangent and that will connect our tangents back up uh, like a normal Bezier path here. So the last thing I'm going to show is kind of helpful when you want to break a tangent. And I like to do this a lot if I want to add some kind of uh, overshoot either in the beginning or the end of my animation. Uh, and you can do this by, so I have this Bezier handle here. I'm going to hold the shift key down and by clicking I can then break those tangents and I now have this kind of overshoot. So this is controlling this uh, logo, the text element here. So I can just independently move this one tangent and leave this the right tangent alone. So I have this nice popping out and slamming into place uh, that is kind of cool if you have a lot of mechanical movements and stuff like that. So I can do the same thing on this side as well and break these tangents. So I'm going to hold shift again and break this tangent so I can have this also overshoot as it goes back into place and that adds a nice kind of pop in pop out kind of effect like I said it looks good when you're when you want some kind of like robotic really jumpy animation so that is how to break tangents so I'm gonna go ahead and hit H and frame everything up and I'm going to go in fold everything back up. So I got my one more thing and that is if you want to easily be able to access some of these commands that I went over in this tutorial as say like the folding options here. You don't want to keep going down to the uh, view menu and doing this mess all the time. Let's actually get these options to be able to just click up here in our timeline. So we can do that very easily by going to window customization and we're going to customize command. And I'm going to turn on this edit palettes and you'll see that everything kind of turns blue. This means we can actually add stuff to our layout windows here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a group separator. I'm just going to drag and drop there. So we have this separator on our menu icon menu here. And then I want to get my fill options. So I'm going to, let's see, they were called, or folding, I'm sorry. Uh, fold all. So I have the fold all in the fold all elements in the timeline. So I'm going to drag and drop that. So I have the icon here. And then let's get the unfold all. And the timeline one is the one we want. So I'm going to drag this one down. And so now we easily have the unfold all and fold all icons that we can easily just click in here. So customizing commands that will really help your workflow in the timeline as well. So customize it the way you want and forget about doing all this crap because that takes a lot of time too. So those are just a few of the cool little functions that I use in my day-to-day -day workflow in Cinema 4D in the timeline. And hopefully you picked up something here that you didn't know before that will really help you in your day-to-day -day workflow. And if you like this kind of thing where I dig into more essential kind of stuff, then let me know. Uh, but hopefully 
this was useful. So until my next tutorial, I will see you next time.